This is Precalc 11, Chapter 3.2. This time we're going to be solving quadratic equations by factoring. This means moving all the terms to one side so that we have an expression that is equal to zero. Then we factor and we need to solve so that a factor equals zero. And recall that anything times zero is zero, and this is called zero property. Okay, in our first example, this is already moved over to one side and factored. And I'm just going to demonstrate how we get an answer from this. So we have 2x minus 3 equal to 0. So that's one answer. So 2x is equal to 3. x is equal to 3 over 2. Please leave your answers as fractions rather than decimals whenever possible. And the other one, we have x plus 4 equals 0 and x equals negative 4. So how we get the answer is if we set this equal to 0, then our answer is 0 because 0 times anything is 0. Again, if we set this equal to 0, anything times 0 is 0. And just be careful how you answer the question. So x equals 3 over 2 or x equals negative 4. And you need to be careful not to write AND. So when we say this or that, it can be either this or that. But if we say AND, it means it has to equal this and that but it can't equal two different values at the same time. So that's why we don't use AND. When we graph this expression, the answers are here and here. That's three and a half, this is negative four. And this is no accident since this value is y is equal to zero. If we set this as y is equal to this, y is equal to zero, we're looking for where they intersect. And they intersect here and here. So the definition of a quadratic equation, it has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The equals zero makes it an equation. If we left out the equal zero, it's just called an expression. Why is it called quadratic? Quadratic means four, and it has four sides. And it comes from the fact that x squared is our first term. And when we have something squared, it's a square. OK, so here's a full example. We need to move these terms over to this side. So we have x squared. This 2x becomes negative 2x, so this is negative 2x plus 5, that's 3x. Negative 4 becomes positive 4, so 4 minus 2 is 2. And then we factor this, x plus 2, x plus 1. The faster you can do mental arithmetic, the faster you'll be able to factor these. So our solution is x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 1. Okay, this time we just have to move the negative 10 over, but we also have to expand this, or by using FOIL. So we have 2x squared. We have 2x times 3, that's 6x, and negative 3 times x, that's negative 3x, so that's positive 3x. We have a negative 9. This 10 becomes positive 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. Okay, next we have to factor. We have a 2x, and we have an x. This only factors with 1 and 1, and they're both positive. So x equals negative 1 half, or x equals negative 1. Now, you can always check your answers by substituting it into the original equation. Do not try substituting it into an intermediate equation, because if you do this, you this might be the equation with an error. If you always substitute back into the original one, you get the proper check. 
So let's plug in negative 2 into this one. Negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2. Oops, that's a 5. Minus 2 equals 2 times negative 2 minus 4. So this is 4 minus 10 minus 2 equals negative 4 minus 4. And that works out because this is 4 minus 12, that's minus 8, and minus 8. When the quadratic has large coefficients, we want to look to cancel out any common factors so that it's easier to solve. So, for example, 5 is the factor of this one. This ends in 0, so it's divisible by 5. This one ends in 5, so it's also divisible by 5. So let's divide everything by 5. So we have 5x squared plus 42 equals 5 times negative 13x. Now we can divide both sides by 5, cancel that out, move everything over to one side, we have x squared, this becomes plus 13x plus 42. This one's easy to factor because there's not too many factors of 42, 6 and 7 are the answer because they add to 17. So our answers are x equals negative 7 or x equals negative 6. Now, does it matter whether we put this one first or this one first? No, it doesn't matter. Now, for some radical equations, we can solve more easily by converting it to quadratic form. However, you need to check for extraneous roots or extraneous answers. So, we can solve this one by isolating the radical x plus 3, negative x, we have plus 2, and this becomes plus 1 on the other side, so we have plus 3. Now we square both sides. And this just becomes x plus 3. And we FOIL this, we get x squared. And this is minus 6x, and we have plus 9. We have to bring this over to the other side, so we have 0 equals x squared. This becomes another minus x, so this is minus 7x. This becomes negative 3, so we have plus 6. Now, anytime this is 1 less than this, this is our factor, and the other factor is 1. So we have x minus 6, x minus 1. So x equals 6, or x equals 1. And now we are required to check our answer for extraneous roots. So put it back into the original one. We have square root 6 plus 3 minus 1 equals minus 6 plus 2. This becomes square root 9, which is 3, minus 1, and this becomes negative 4. This is 2 equals negative 4, but that does not equal, so this is not a solution. Not a solution. And you can also say extraneous. Next one. Square root 1 plus 3 minus 1 equals negative 1 plus 2. So this is square root 4, that's 2 minus 1, and we have 2 minus 1. So this is good. This is our solution. x equals 1 is solution. So in order to understand this better, it's easy to look at a graph. Here we have the line negative x plus 2. Here we have the radical square root x plus 3 minus 1. It crosses here. This is the other half of the sideways parabola 
and they meet here. However, this part of the sideways parabola is not part of the original equation because we're only looking at the positive part. We would have to have plus or minus to look at both parts of the parabola. So, valid solution. Extraneous solution. So word problems. If you have a word problem, always draw a diagram if it's not provided. And look at the question to determine what quantity should be the variable if it hasn't already been done for you. Know your formulas so that you can create an equation. Let's look at an example. We have a box that is 4 centimeters by 7 centimeters by 9 centimeters. It's been labeled L, W, and H. And it says when the width and height are increased by the same amount, the volume is increased by 228 cubic centimeters. So how much were the width and height increased by? Okay, draw yourself a diagram. So, does it matter which one you label L, W, or H? Not really. And we're told that the W is increased by some amount. And we're told that the height is increased by the same amount. So, X is our variable. X is actually what we want as our variable because that's what the question is asking for. How much is it increased by? It's in being increased by x. So let's come up with a formula. Our original volume is length times width times height. And that's 4 times 7 times 9. That's 252. So our final volume is 4 times 7 plus x and 9 plus x. This is just the formula for the volume of the cube, length times width times height. This happens to be our new width and height. So we have the original volume plus our increase, which is 228. So now we expand this. This is 4. Let's expand this first. x squared plus 16x plus 63 equals 480. Now, we want to keep numbers low, so instead of multiplying this out, it's best to divide both sides by 4, since this is divisible by 4. So we have x squared plus 16x plus 63 equals 120. Now we isolate and move everything to one side. So we have x squared plus 16x minus 57 equals 0. And now we factor this. You should practice your product factor sum method if you don't know how to factor this. And our answer is x equals 3 or x equals negative 19. Okay, this is our answer. This is extraneous for two reasons. And it's because, first of all, it's not an increase because it's negative. It's a decrease. Also, it makes the width and height negative. So if we add minus 19 to this, we get minus 12. We add minus 19 to this, we get minus 10. Negative 12 and negative 10 are not good measurements of length because they're negative. So our answer
So the height and width increase by three centimeters. It's good to put your units in to be fully correct. And that completes this lesson.